today we're going to be talking about my top choices uh, of figs for rainy or humid climates and uh, and or short season climates and that's pretty much what my climate is it's a very short season 180 days but really um, I would say the first month of May and the last month of um, October really there's not a whole lot of heat so uh, the growing season is quite short here we also get a lot of rain 40 inches of rain um, lots of humidity and that's really not good for figs the, you know the quality of the fruit diminishes I've talked about this at great length with you guys you know the, the figs split um, mold you know, increased fermentation, which leads to SWD, you know, the list goes on and on. So, but there's some of them that I would say probably roughly two and a half to 5% of all common figs show good um, characteristics to actually work for you in a short season climate. And a lot of people have been asking just in general, whether or not it's me or maybe it's, you know, uh, through a forum or a Facebook group, a common question is why doesn't my fig tree fruit um, if it's in the ground um, or if it's in a container? Why why didn't it fruit at all? Well, there's many reasons, but largely genetics has a huge part in that, and only certain figs with the right genetics that actually can fruit earlier that don't need as much heat. They've adapted to the colds. Uh, usually you'll find them that they, they came from um, a place that uh, is probably on the edge of like, you know, the wasp being present and the wasp not being present. Or maybe it's a, a cooler place that's like a, a colder zone eight, um, or maybe even zone seven that have been, you know, transplanted there. But usually along zone, zone eight climates, you can find some pretty hidden gems in there um, that I bet you if you look up and you knew if you knew the original origin of each of these figs I'm about to mention to you I bet you a lot of them came from a zone 8 colder climate um, and they've just adapted you know um, so this is what I'm showing you guys right now is the spreadsheet that I use and I pretty much update this all the time I keep this thing like a well-oiled machine as much as information that I bring in I try to put it here because it's difficult to remember everything so it's it's nice to put it all in here and have all my thoughts in one place and you know I make this available to you guys it's in every it's in the description of every single video I've ever put out so this is the list this is the full list here and so far I've found about 44 of them which I would consider my top choices for a short season or a humid climate and um, you know I think that number is probably more roughly like 35 uh, and some of these I've never grown I have yet to acquire them um, these are only going off of uh, kind of the input of others you know um, I ask people a lot of questions to find out I feel like uh, an, an Egyptologist sometimes where you have to figure out uh, what happened thousands of years ago to get any sort of shred of information out of people that really don't have much information to begin with because they never share it. Um, yet they have these figs that are quite interesting and would be a great use to a lot of people like myself in a climate that I'm in. You know, um, they don't really do the community a great service. So for me, I've asked people a lot of questions, and that's the only way you're going to find any information out, unless you do it yourself. Uh, for a while, I figured I'm just going to grow every fig I can because the information is so sparse, so thin, that I just got to grow up myself because there's no other way to find out the answer. So, um, But now I have so many contacts and so many people that uh, I can rely on, or people that, have, that post now publicly that um, you can really get a hold of and and uh, you know figure out some pretty solid information so these to me in this column here my top choices are pretty solid um, you know a lot of them I have grown but there is some of them like I said 
haven't yet acquired and only have really strong hunches about them. And then these are just figs that, again, I think I just need more information on. I'm not willing to put them into my top choices category yet because they just don't have a whole lot of people growing them. You know, there's only two people in the United States that I know of are even growing this fig here, Barbalone. Uh, Angier Torkey, I just heard about this fig a couple days ago, and there's only one person, to my knowledge, who is growing it. So, you know, some of these figs, you know, we just need a lot more time with them um, to really fully understand them. Um, and like I said, it's just, it just is very difficult unless you are growing them yourself. But I want to go over some of the top ones and tell you my reasoning. So, Black Celeste and Blue Celeste, we talked about this in a previous video. Hopefully you guys saw that. Um, I talked about my end of 2018 and my favorites that I enjoyed and the, the things that I'm most hopeful about for the following year. Um, and I do have Blue and Black Celeste in my possession, and these two uh, are showing great promise of being two Celeste-styled figs that are old heirlooms. Um, and these old heirloom figs, guys, found within the United States are often overlooked. It's very strange because Celeste is such a phenomenal variety, but us as hobbyists know that Celeste, there's better figs than just a plain old Celeste. Unless, of course, through research, I found these two heirlooms that uh, actually do quite well and are really tasty. Uh, but because they have the name Celeste attached to their name, many hobbyists have put them aside and completely forgotten about them. Brandon Street Unknown, this is another fig, along with uh, Taramo Unknown, that I find to be quite similar. We talked about them. Very good light berry figs that uh, are quite early. And they, they're they very early. In fact, Taramo is like just as early as Ron de Bordeaux. Ron de Bordeaux I use as the standard for an early fig. It is... Uh, one of the earliest, if not the earliest, figs in existence, and it's also very tasty. Um, another fig that's coming into existence now is called Campanieri, and this is found uh, from France through a grower named um, Thierry, and this is his website here, Figs of the World, and he has a whole list of varieties you can read about them. He mentions that it's also quite hardy, uh, it ripens for him in mid-August, uh, which I think is the beginning of the season for the most part. Um, begin in mid-August in some years and spread over more than a month. He also says it's very tasty. You can tell just by looking at it. Uh, Thierry has also a couple figs that are on my list here that I would recommend. And I've spoken to him, but very briefly, it's hard to get a hold of him. Um, he mentions quite a few that are good for short season and rainy climates. I think he's more in a cooler area, I believe, of France. I don't think he's really in the, the warmest place, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, he's got a good handle on what will do well in his collection in a, in a climate like mine. So Col Noir is another one from his uh, collection. And I'm butchering these names. Here's another one, Ubon. Ubon, I don't know. This one here, Figu John. And, you know, Lampira 1 is another one from this collection. What else is from this collection before I make a point about them? That's kind of it. There's also some over here that I've yet to bump up, but Tenerife is one. He has a fig called uh, Narino. It's actually the same thing as Moro di Cineva, which is very ancient Italian variety that uh, is super early. It's actually like 500 years old, this variety, they, people believe. And it's also very, very good. So he's got some really nice things in his collection um, that are, I hope are going to make their way into the United States um, in full force because that's about six or seven figs I just named that are really early. Um, so for the fact that they're very early, I'm kind of putting them into this category already. 
but also because they look very tasty as well. Um, La, Magdala La Magdalene is another one that he grows that he recommends. But I don't think it's probably as tasty as Lampira One or Figu John or Col Noir or Campaneri, so I didn't put it in this category. More testing obviously need to be required. This is Col de Dom Gris, but this is the VS version, and I believe this is LSU Scott's Black. I'm pretty confident in that. And LSU Scott's Black I don't think is a good choice for a rainy climate. It splits a lot. It's also a little bit late. Um, it's like mid-season to late. Um, it could be quite productive, which Col de Dom Gris VS is, but uh, every photo I've seen, I believe that at some point uh, Herman... Herman probably has a, well, I'm talking about Herman, which is VS. That's his initials here, VS. Um, Herman is the guy who's pretty much put figs on the map for people like me in, um, in a colder zone. He really trialed many varieties and came up with a pretty good list. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of expanding upon his list because I don't know what Herman is doing right now. I know he's growing figs. But he's disappeared from the fig community. He doesn't talk to anybody. The knowledge that he had was was very difficult to bring out of him, um, you know. And that's just no fault to his. It's just that's how some people are. So, um, you know, I would like to pretty much continue what he was what he's doing and, and expand upon that. People believe that his Col de Dom Greece is different than Col de Dom Greece, and I can agree with that. But I don't believe, I think there was some kind of mistake at some point. And he probably sent out LSU Scott's Black to some to somebody or a couple people by mistake. He does have a cold Adam Brees in the ground. I mean, I, I'm pretty confident in that. Looking back and doing the research, actually, I did some today because I ripened uh, an LSU Scott's Black yesterday and I wanted to compare further. So... Um, I think it's LSU Scott's Black, and LSU Scott's Black is really not one that um, I'm a big fan of. So actually, this this should be over here in this column, in all honesty. Um, but you never know. We'll see what happens with this. And the next one on the list is um, Dian Manel, and I'm pretty sure this one's uh, Riste de Saint-Jean, which is a French fig. There's a lot of figs coming out of France, guys, that... Uh, are proving to be pretty successful here in my climate. I think that's because a lot of France is like zone 8. They have the wasp in certain parts, they don't have it in others, and I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of figs that have been growing there for years that have kind of adapted to that climate. Um, and zone 8, you know, that that's like 10 degrees Fahrenheit at the minimum. But I'm sure even if they're in the zone 8, their climate at certain weird years has gone below 10 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, closer to zero degrees Fahrenheit, similar to mine. So I think a lot of these figs are probably adapted, like I said. Now, I don't know this for sure if D and Manel, but that's, again, another hunch. I think it's the same thing as Grease de St. Jean. They're both definitely figs that are tasty, reliable here. They're also quite early, so I like it. Um, I like them both, and I'm going to grow Grease de St. Jean. I tried to grow it last year, but um, it didn't succeed for me. But I'm going to get cuttings this year again, and we're going we're gonna to do round two. The Trace Displace is another one. Uh, the Trace Displace, this is Pons' earliest fig. and The ones that are labeled with NP, those are from uh, Montserrat Pons, Del San Juan Gran. Some of them I haven't labeled, Lava Campanera, Lava Floor, Capole Curtain Negra. You know, he lists out the beauty of ponds, and you can go to his website. He really does have a great source of information, whether it's through his book or what. But you can go to Detrace's place here, visit the variety, and uh, it ripens the 2nd of August. And in Spain, that's about the beginning of fig season. That's the very first. This is the earliest fig, and this ripens right aligned with Ron de Bordeaux. So the fact that we have found a fig from Spain 
that uh, is also somewhat adapted to our weather uh, is really good. The problem with the trace displays is that Pons does mention that it doesn't do as well with the rain, but it, it is a very, very early fig. So you can definitely guarantee that uh, it's going to be reliable here, at least in that sense. Um, we also have uh, Fico Salame and uh, Vertolino. And these are two figs that um, are becoming quite popular in Europe. Uh, I believe uh, Paolo Bologna is growing one of these. He's growing Vertolino. Actually, he is. So you can see this here. This is um, Paolo Bologna's Facebook page. Um, you can go here and follow him and see all his posts. They're beautiful. He's got such a nice property of diversity and preservation and whoever it takes the photos for him or if he does it I don't know but it's really beautiful and a great place to be I'm sure I'm sure it's a, a beautiful place to visit someday I will visit this place um, but he, he said on July 29th which is the beginning of fig season where he is as well at least for main crop um, he mentions a couple figs here that uh, are early at least the, the, the earliest ones. And he recommends um, Petrelli, Vertolino, Pastelliere, and I don't know how to say this one, Ungirolo. Um, and then you can go back and see, ah, actually, you know what? Maybe this isn't the post that I'm looking for. There's a separate post here. I want to see if I can show you guys this. Here we go, right here. So on August 1st of that same year, so I don't know why he uh, he posts. There's two different posts. I don't know, but it should be the same thing. But he recommends uh, Nericciolo, the Elba, San Baggio, Paradiso, in addition to the other fruits that I just mentioned. So. Um, this one here is Unarolio, or I don't know how to say it. This one here is Nutrolo, the Elba. This is from the island of Elba. Uh, this is San Baggio, very rare Italian fig. Uh, this one here is Salame or Vertolino. And I think Vertolino and Salame are synonymous with each other. This here is Paradiso. This is pa Pastelliere. And then we're back to the beginning. Um, so, you know, he lists out a couple figs that he recommends, um, and I did read in one of his posts, I, maybe I can find it, I don't know, maybe in a, in a different time I'll go and find it, but he recommends Pastelliere, if you're going to only have one fig, that would be the fig, Pastelliere. So, I completely agree, and I think it's a phenomenal variety, it's down here on my list. It's very early, it's very hearty, it's very tasty. Um, it's just super reliable. So for me, it's a no-brainer. I think it's going to be the the best overall fig that I have. Better than Smith. And Smith is the best overall fig that I have. So if we go down the list back to where we were. We're at Vertolino here. So that covers a lot of what he recommends. We have uh, Ungarolo. You know, Nutrola di Elba, Moro di Cineva, which he doesn't mention, but that's another early Italian variety, San Baggio. Um, you know, and the list goes on and on, yada, yada, yada. Um, we also get down to um, Green Michurinska, and this is from Bulgaria, I believe. And uh, Bulgaria is another one of those areas we should be looking out for for these figs. Um, they say it is a very close relative of uh, Floria or Michurinska 10. And uh, I like Michurinska 10 because it's super early, but I don't like it for its rain resistance. So I put it in this category here. But this is just as early, supposedly. It's a very early fig, and it's green skinned with a red interior. That's impossible to find a green skin, red interior fig that is this early, it doesn't exist. 
but this one does. So this would be the first of this kind, and that's really, really cool. It's like an Adriatic-style fig of like Green Aishia, JH Adriatic, those kind of figs. Then we get down to Hardy Chicago. This is a no-brainer. It is the best choice in ground for my climate. And there's many, many types. Uh, Azores Dark, Malta Black, I think are quite different, but uh, I could definitely put them in this category. Uh, Hated de Argentile. It's another French fig. It means early. I think Hated means early from Argentile. And, um, you know, so far I really like it. I think it has a lot of potential, but it's mostly unproven. Um, but the fact that it's super early, I think it's it's really going to be worth something here. Improved Celeste. This is as early as Ron de Bordeaux. Very, very reliable in the rain. It's one of the best figs you can have here. Um, Iraqi is another one. This is a Ficus Palmata that's very uh, unusual. So it's a Ficus Palmata. Um, I'll show it to you guys here. This is Iraqi here. See how the stem is very long? This is a Ficus Palmata hybrid. The leaves are of a um, heart shape. Very, a very good characteristic of uh, Ficus Palmata hybrids. And it's also very early. Um, I think a lot of the Palmata hybrids guys set figs quite early. One of my friends has one that I believe to be a hybrid called Simon Unknown. And I believe this one's also very early as well. And I think that's just a characteristic of that hybrid gene that they may have inherited. I'm not sure. Ishia Black UC Davis is a very early, it's like a mid-season Black Madeira. Very similar to Smith, I would say, in, in, the, in the way I would think about it. Because it's a mid-season variety that is extremely tasty. Um, Italian 258, more on the later side. It is the same thing, though, as Genovese Nero AF, um, but it is a very good performer here. Not so much in the rain, but when it comes to late season choices, this one ripens its full crop in about a month and a half, and it happens very quickly. Uh, it's very, very good. Long de out, long de do, long of August. It's uh, a very early fig just about everywhere. It's grown all throughout Europe, has many names. Um, a very, very good fig. LSU Champagne, probably the classic honey fig that I have, the most reliable honey fig that I have. And I really like it. Um, it's also very early. It's about two weeks after Ron de Bordeaux. LSU Holier is, is almost as early, is just as early as Champagne. It holds up to the rain better. And it has an interesting flavor to it. Uh, that's more of like a true honey fig, like LSU Champagne, but it also has a light, refreshing berry flavor attached to it, um, which is a very good characteristic uh, for flavor, if you ask me. LSU Purple, again, another great variety coming out of Louisiana State University. LSU Tiger, the same thing, a little bit, uh, a little bit worse in the rain than the other four, or the other three I have here. Moscatel Preto, again, a Portuguese fig that does phenomenal. Uh, my friend Jamie is the one who really is a big proponent of this variety. Um, and I sort of agree so far. Negretta, uh, this is an Italian variety that was found sort of in the wild. Uh, and I think Sergio Carlini is the one who kind of uh, promoted this fig. And it's very tasty. Uh, it's quite hearty. It's very early, um, holds up to the rain well. I really want this. Uh, I'm going to put one of these fig trees in the ground this spring of Migretta. Uh, we talked about Moro de Caneva, 500 years old. Nerociola de Elba, a very good, small black fig that uh, is also quite early. I'm sure it's pretty rain resistant. Um, I think it has to ripen, though, for a pretty decent amount of time. I think it has to hang for a long time. Um, it also has the ability to dry on the tree, which is nice. Noir de Barbentain, I think is actually a bit later than I would uh, I would like. And uh, I'm kind of on the fence of this one now, but Bode in France, 
who really knows a lot about French figs, uh, recommends this one for a shorter season climate because it's, he says it has better cold resistance and uh, it's about two weeks earlier than um, Gorgeous Sot Noir, which is pretty much exactly like Noir de Barbantane, but this one has some kind of uh, mutation probably or adaptation that has made it just better for shorter season climates. Still on the fence on that. Noir de Boulogne, same thing. This one's really widely across France and does exceptionally well as a mid-season variety in France. Pastelier we talked about, Ronde Bardel we talked about, San Baggio we talked about, Smith again very amazing mid-season fig, very reliable even in the rain. Socorro Black is one that I'm uh, becoming a big fan of because it ripens it's a later season fig, just like Italian 258, so I kind of regard it in the same way. Um, not that they're the same fig or anything, or they taste the same, but it's a late season fig that actually performs quite well in the rain. It seems to ripen its crop in a shorter window, uh, which is great for shorter season climates. Suwadi, I think, is more early to mid-season. It's probably two to three weeks after Hardy Chicago, if I or Ron de Bordeaux, if I, if I had a guess. Um, I've talked a great length about this fig. You guys can go back and see many videos on it. Um, Sultane, again, really great fig. Um, one of my favorites, but I haven't had a, too much time growing it. Um, my Unfortunately, my tree died last year, and I'm getting it replaced this year. And actually, I'm going to put one in the ground in the spring because uh, it has nice hardiness. It's also a good commercial fig. It's probably, it is mid-season, and it does produce a Brava, though. If you remove the Brava, it probably will produce earlier for you. Um, you know, Taramo Unknown we talked about, Unigrola we talked about. Um, Violet Support, this is a bit of a debate here. This is a This is an interesting topic because there's two figs from Prush Park in California. One is Borges So Grease, the other one's Violet Support. And the map in Prush Park is kind of messed up. It's not really well documented. The map doesn't correspond with the locations of certain trees. It's a mess. But my friends who know what they're doing have gone to the park and have recognized the inaccuracies in the map, figured out what tree was what, and I think there's been a bit of a mislabeling error with Borges So Grease. Because Borges So Grease is way different than Violet Support. Um, and Borges So Grease is a later fig. It's a darker, it's like a purple fig. Darker red interior. Probably tastes better. But it's a later season variety. Um, whereas Violet Support is actually like a mid-season fig here. It doesn't need a head start. It's really of great quality. It has a nice, sharp berry flavor to it. Holds up decently in the rain. And, uh, yeah, it's a great choice. V uh, Violette de Bordeaux, that's a no-brainer. There's so many of them, too. Nero 600M is a good one. Um, White Triana, this is my favorite of this type of fig. There's many of them that I've talked about in the past. Uh, it's, a green, it's a big green yellow skin fig that has a real dark red interior to it if you let it ripen for about 10 to 14 days has thick skin um you know it holds up to the rain really well it doesn't split the water doesn't get into the fig and ruin the quality it's a damn winner um and then we have the last two or two honey figs zafiro is one that i got to try this year uh it's really good it's the best honey fig I've eaten. Um, it's a different kind of honey, though. Different from LSU Champagne. Holds up to the rain really well. It was the only fig in the crazy rain we had this year that actually held up to it. Um, so I really like that fig. And then there's Yellow Long Neck, which produces a huge, huge honey fig. Um, that actually is quite early. You would think that it's such a big fig that it wouldn't ripen. Um, as early as it does, but it does, uh, which is really strange. Another one that I'm uh, considering adding, which is very similar to Yellow Long Neck, is called Albo from Italy. Another 
large honey fig that's very early. So these are pretty much my recommendations, guys. And I, I constantly keep this updated so that you guys can go back. And again, this is always in the description of every video that I, I do. You can go and see this anytime you want. Figure out which figs you guys want to get. And uh, hopefully together, because... <laughs> You know, I ask people a lot of questions and try to get information from people. So, you know, hopefully you guys can grow some of these things too and actually help me out. That would, actually, that would be really great. So, anyway, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. This was my top overall performers of figs in, in humid and uh, short season climates. So, thank you all, and uh, I'll talk to you all later. Take care.